Well, it is recording. Good morning, folks. <clears throat> good morning. Actually, good afternoon. It's not good morning. It's good afternoon. And uh, I'm going to not just eat my lunch on camera, but I'm going to let you hear I'm going to start doing something here, <clears throat> and I'm not sure the exact dynamics behind what I'm going to do here, but I am going to play some audio that's very significant to me and to perhaps some of you, and maybe to some of you who have never heard of this material that I'm going to play, but... I want to try to talk with a goal and mission and an objective for the betterment of mankind, meaning starting with myself, trying to be a better person in everything I do. But <clears throat> illustrate some of those steps I have encountered and am taking and have taken to see these goals come to pass, meaning step by step. <coughs> so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> from Viper TV, which is in a YouTube channel called uh, Viper TV. And they have Viper Films and Viper this and that. But there's this one audio recording of the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, T-H-O-T-H, -H, which I am going to play. Now, they're two and a half hours long, so I'm not going to sit here for two and a half hours and do that right now. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just do the introduction and maybe the preface. That'll be about <coughs> that'll be about maybe fifteen minutes max, I think. Maybe a little bit more with me talking on it. Um, and we'll just listen together. And I want to have you th uh, contemplate and think what you're going to hear. And I may stop it, or I may just let it go to the end, and then stop it, and then talk. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and initiate play right now. The history of the tablets translated is strange and beyond the belief of modern scientists. Their antiquity is stupendous, dating back some 36,000 years BC. The writer is Thoth, an Atlantean priest king who founded a colony in ancient Egypt after the sinking of the mother country. He was the founder of the Great Pyramid of Giza, erroneously attributed to Cheops. In it, he incorporated his knowledge of the ancient wisdom and also securely secreted records and instruments of ancient Atlantis. For some 16,000 years, he ruled the ancient race of Egypt from approximately 50,000 BC to 36,000 BC. At that time, the ancient barbarous race among which he and his followers had settled had been raised to a high degree of civilization. Thoth was an immortal. That is, he had conquered death, passing only when he willed, and even then, not through death. His vast wisdom made him a ruler over the various Atlantean colonies, including the ones in South and Central America. When the time came for him to leave Egypt, he erected the Great Pyramid over the entrance to the Great Halls of Amanti, placed in it his records, and appointed guards for his secrets from among the highest of his people. In later times, the descendants of these guards became the Pyramid Priest, by which Thoth was deified as the god of wisdom, the recorder by those in the age of darkness which followed his passing. In legend, the halls of Amenti became the underworld, the halls of the gods, where the soul passed after death for judgment. During later ages, the ego of Thoth passed into the bodies of men in the manner described in the tablets. As such, he incarnated three times, 
in his last being, known as Hermes, the Thriceborn. In this incarnation, he left the writings known to modern occultists as the Emerald Tablets, a later and far lesser exposition of the ancient mysteries. The tablets translated in this work are ten, which were left in the Great Pyramid in the custody of the Pyramid Priest. The ten are divided into thirteen parts for the sake of convenience. The last two are so great and far-reaching in their import I shouldn't that at do present this. it is forbidden to release them to the world at large. However, in those contained herein are secrets which will prove of inestimable value to the serious student. They should be read not once but a hundred times, for only thus can the true meaning be revealed. A casual reading will give only glimpses of beauty but more intensive study will open avenues of wisdom to the seeker. But now a word as to how these mighty secrets came to be revealed to modern man after being hidden so long. Some 1300 years BC, Egypt, the ancient Qiyam, was in turmoil and many delegations of priests were sent to other parts of the world. Among these were some of the pyramid priests who carried with them the emerald tablets as a talisman by which they could exercise authority over the less advanced priest craft of races descended from other Atlantean colonies. The tablets were understood from legend to give the bearer authority from Thoth. The particular group of priests bearing the tablets emigrated to South America, where they found a flourishing race, the Mayas, who remembered much of the ancient wisdom. Among these, the priests settled and remained. In the 10th century, the Mayas had thoroughly settled the Yucatan, and the tablets were placed beneath the altar of one of the great temples of the sun god. After the conquest of the Mayans by the Spaniards, the cities were abandoned and the treasures of the temples forgotten. It should be understood that the Great Pyramid of Egypt has been and still is a temple of the initiation into the mysteries. Jesus, Solomon, Apollonius, and others were initiated there. The right... Let me stop right here. <clears throat> Just in those few moments of audio recording, there's a lot of stuff. Now, the guy talking has a very good voice. Perfect voice for this kind of material. I found his voice to be the best voice to convey this message and this material. Too many times other people, they don't convey it very nicely. They just can't. Even my friend Gerald Clark, his readings of the Emerald Tablets of Thoth on his audiobooks and even in his book itself, right here, you know, listening to it is not as good as this, but that's not the point, the point I just wanted to illustrate is, did you hear what this guy said? Thoth himself wrote in the preface of his emerald tablets that he made the pyramids of Egypt and Jesus was schooled there, okay? And in South America and Central America, the Mayans were the descendants of the ancient pyramid priests, meaning they left and they went to South and Central America at some time in an earlier, you know, historical uh, time frame. Now, inject in my upbringing. I was born and raised Mormon, Latter-day Saint, now it's the, the proper name is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And <clears throat> the Book of Mormon talks extensively about leaving the ancient land, the promised or or, or Jerusalem and, and the Middle East and sailing across the oceans to the promised land, the land of opportunity, the blessed land. <clears throat> and that is known to be the Americas. And here we have correlation 
in a non-Mormon um, information source that actually correlates a lot of LDS stuff. Now, for years, I have tried unsuccessfully to merge this kind of material with Mormon teachings and share that with Mormon, quote, educated scholarly types of people. And the only person that I had a modicum of success with on this, I forget his name, you can look it up, the Seoul, the Seoul Korea Temple President, circa 2001. He was over there in Korea. I was stationed there also, was in the same branch, and got got to be friends with him. Or uh, let me back up. I wasn't really friends with him. I I would he would engage me in conversations. That's what I should say. And the temple president, that's a very high up job in the Mormon Church. And to have him entertain me, not just cursory, but with seriousness. He actually wanted the, the source material that I was talking about, the books. Now, in 2001, I knew nothing of Thoth. I, I knew a little bit about him from reading Sitchin's books, but I didn't know who Thoth really was. It wasn't until the past five or six years that I really sunk my brain into this and really studied the Emerald Tablets um, on a daily basis. So... Let me continue the, the, the video, or the audio, I should say. <sighs> ...who has a connection with the Great White Lodge, which also works through the Pyramid Priesthood, was instructed to recover and return to the Great Pyramids, the ancient tablets. This, after adventures which need not be detailed here, was accomplished. Before returning them, he was given permission to translate and retain a copy of the wisdom engraved on the tablets. This was done in 1925, and only now has permission been given for part to be published. It is expected that many will scoff, yet the true student will read between the lines and gain wisdom. If the light is in you, the light which is engraved in these tablets will respond. Now a word as to the material aspect of the tablets. They consist of 12 tablets of emerald green formed from a substance created through alchemical transmutation. They are imperishable, resistant to all elements and substances. In effect, the atomic and cellular structure is fixed, no change ever taking place. In this respect, they violate the material law of ionization. Upon them are engraved characters in the ancient Atlantean language, characters which respond to attuned thought waves, releasing the associated mental vibration in the mind of the reader. The tablets are fastened together with hoops of golden-colored alloy suspended from a rod of the same material. So much for the material appearance. The wisdom contained therein is a foundation of the ancient mysteries, and for the one who reads with open eyes and mind, his wisdom shall be increased a hundredfold. Read... Listen to that. <clears throat> Listen to that promise. Six minutes in, Thoth tells us, humanity, that if we listen to these things, read these emerald tablets, we have to be there at least a hundred times of repetitions of repetitive hearing, repetitive he uh, listening, repetitive reading. But once we get there, our knowledge in, in IQ or whatever, however we want to properly define that, is increased by a factor of 100. That is a hell of a promise for an upgrade. I believe that. I do. So, let's continue. Believe or not, 
But read, and the vibration found herein will awaken a response in your soul. In Cosmic Harmony, Dorio, Supreme Voice of the Brotherhood. Introduction. In the following pages, I will reveal some of the mysteries which as yet have only been touched upon lightly, either by myself or other teachers or students of truth. Man's search for understanding of the laws which regulate his life has been unending, yet always just beyond the veil which shields the higher planes from material man's vision, the truth has existed, ready to be assimilated by those who enlarge their vision by turning inward, not outward, in their search. In the sun. Okay. <clears throat> turning inward, not outward, in our search for truth, for happiness, for fulfillment, and for meaning. My wonderful mother, she is still alive. Her name's Judith Davis Simons Buswell. That's her married name. I remember when I was a little guy, a little boy, she would spend a, a lot of time with me just reasoning and sharing a lot of interaction. It wasn't superficial. It was relatively deep for a child that I can recall. And I remember that she always told me what her father told her. And I remember her father very well, Rupert Theodore Simons, born 1902, died in 1980. I was 14 when he died. And the night before he died, I had a dream that I was looking 15 years in the future, seeing his wife, my grandmother, my mother's mother, in a bed, sick, of cancer from years of smoking so that morning after i woke up and i it clearly was an out-of-body experience but at the time a 14 year old kid i didn't know what it was but it was at the time i know it was i was seeing the future and i saw my grandmother on her deathbed and around when did she die i think she died around 92 93, 94, somewhere in that range. Forgive me for not knowing. But my vision was about 10 to 15 years in the future. So I saw that. I was going to tell my mother that morning, hey, mom, I had a dream that I saw Nana 10, 15 years after Pappy dies. That's what we called him, Pappy, Nana and Pappy. After he dies, and she was sick in bed, you know, with cancer and various elements of her body but I didn't I didn't how, how do you go and tell your your parent that crazy dream when you're 14 so I didn't do it that very afternoon late afternoon we got the call that they had gotten in an accident my grandfather Pappy had died blew me away blew me away so the wisdom that my mother passed to me when I was a child was just exactly what thought said to do go inward. My mom told me that to solve all the things and the worries that you have, you need to go inside of yourself. You need to find the solutions within, within your own heart, your own mind, your own experiences and Seek the answers internally. Now, Thoth himself says, do just that. How many Christian teachings out there do we engage in that says the same stuff? Jesus said the same stuff. Go inward for solutions. Let's continue. of material senses lies the key to the unveiling of wisdom. He who talks does not know. He who knows does not talk. The highest knowledge is unutterable, for it exists as an entity 
in lanes which transcend all material words or symbols. All symbols are but keys to doors leading to truths, and many times the door is not opened because the key seems so great that the things which are beyond it are not visible. If we can understand that all keys, all material symbols are manifestations, are but extensions of a great law and truth, we will begin to develop the vision which will enable us to penetrate beyond the veil. All things in all universes move according to law, and the law which regulates the movement of the planets is no more immutable than the law which regulates the material expressions of man. One of the greatest of all cosmic laws is that which is responsible for the formation of man as a material being. The great aim of the mystery schools of all ages has been to reveal the workings of the law which connect man the material and man the spiritual. The connecting link between the material man and the spiritual man is the intellectual man, for the mind partakes of both the material and immaterial qualities. The aspirant for higher knowledge must develop the intellectual side of his nature and so strengthen his will that he is able to concentrate all powers of his being on and in the plane he desires. The great search for light, life, and love only begins on the material plane. Carried to its ultimate, its final goal is complete oneness with the universal consciousness. The foundation in the material is the first step. Then comes the higher goal of spiritual attainment. In the following pages, I will give an interpretation of the emerald tablets and their secret, hidden, and esoteric meanings. Concealed in the words of thought are many meanings that do not appear on the surface. Light of knowledge brought to bear upon the tablets will open many new fields for thought. Read and be wise, but only if the light of your own consciousness awakens the deep-seated understanding, which is an inherent quality of the soul. In the Threefold Light, Dorio. Emerald Tent. Okay, <clears throat> that was an introduction and a preface. There was a lot of stuff in there, a lot of stuff. And I'm probably going to go on to Emerald Tablet 1 and play that and then conclude this because I'm going to try to, I, I said in the beginning, 15 minutes, but this is going to be a 30-minute video. So let's, let's get right into Emerald Tablet number 1. Tablet 1, The History of Thoth, the Atlantean. I, Thoth, the Atlantean, master of mysteries, keeper of records, mighty king, magician, living from generation to generation, being about to pass into the halls of Amenti, set down for the guidance of those that are to come after these records of the mighty wisdom of the great Atlantis. In the great city of Kier, on the island of Undal, in a time far past, I began this incarnation, not as the little men of the present age did the mighty ones of Atlantis live and die, but rather from eon to eon did they renew their life in the halls of Amenti, where the river of life flows eternally onward. A hundred times ten have I descended the dark way that led into light, and as many times have I ascended from the darkness into the light, my strength and power renewed. Now for a time I descend, and the men of Cam shall know me no more. But in a time yet unborn will I rise again, mighty and potent, requiring an accounting of those left behind me. Then beware. O men of Cam, if ye falsely betrayed my teaching, for I shall cast ye down from your high estate into the darkness of the caves from whence ye came. Betray not my secrets to the men of the north or the men of the south, lest my course fall upon ye. Remember and heed my words, for surely will I return again and require of thee that which ye guard. I, even from beyond time and from beyond death, will I return, rewarding or punishing as ye have requited your trust. Great were my people in the ancient days, great beyond the conception of the little people now around me, knowing the wisdom of the old seeking far within the heart of infinity knowledge that belonged to Earth's youth. 
Wise were we with the wisdom of the children of light who dwelt among us. Strong were we with the power drawn from the eternal fire. And of all these, greatest among the children of men was my father, Thothme, keeper of the great temple, link between the children of light who dwelt within the temple and the races of men who inhabited the ten islands. Mouthpiece after the three of the dweller of the Unal, speaking to the kings with the voice that must be obeyed. Grew I there from a child into manhood, being taught by my father the elder mysteries, until in time there grew within the fire of wisdom, until it burst into a consuming flame. Naught desired I but the attainment of wisdom, until on a great day the command came from the dweller of the temple that I be brought before him. Few there were among the children of men who had looked upon that mighty face and lived, for not as the sons of men are the children of light when they are not incarnate in a physical body. Chosen was I from the sons of men, taught by the dweller, so that his purposes might be fulfilled, purposes yet unborn in the womb of time. Long ages I dwelt in the temple, learning ever and yet ever more wisdom, until I too approached the light emitting from the great fire. Taught me he the path to Amenti, the underworld where the great king sits upon his throne of might. Deep I bowed my homage before the lords of life and the lords of death, receiving as my gift the key of life. <clears throat> Free was I of the halls of Amenti, bound not by death to the circle of life. For to the stars I journeyed until space and time became as naught. Then, having drunk deep of the cup of wisdom, I looked into the hearts of men, and there found I greater mysteries, and was glad. For only in the search for truth could my soul be stilled, and the flame within be quenched. Down through the ages I lived, seeing those around me taste of the cup of death, and return again in the light of life. Gradually, from the kingdoms of Atlantis, passed waves of consciousness that had been one with me, only to be replaced by spawn of a lower star. In obedience to the law, the word of the master grew into flower. Downward into darkness turned the thoughts of the Atlanteans, until at last, in his wrath, arose from his aguanti, the dweller, the word calling the power. Deep in earth's heart, the sons of Amenti heard and hearing directed the changing of the flower of fire that burns eternally, changing and shifting, using the logos until that great fire changed its direction. Over the world then broke the great waters, drowning and sinking, changing earth's balance until only the temple of light was left standing on the great mountain of Undal, still rising out of the water. Some there were who were living, saved from the rush of the fountains. Call to me then the master saying, Gather ye together, my people. Take them by the arts ye have learned of far across the waters until ye reach the land of the hairy barbarians dwelling in caves of the desert. Follow there the plan that ye know of. Gathered I then, my people, and entered the great ship of the master. Upward we rose into the morning. Dark beneath us lay the temple. Suddenly over it rose the waters, vanished from earth until the time appointed was the great temple. Fast we fled toward the sun of the morning until beneath us lay the land of the children of Cam. Raging, they came with cudgels and spears, lifted in anger, seeking to slay and utterly destroy the sons of Atlantis. Then raised I my staff and directed a ray of vibration, striking them still in their tracks as fragments. I got to stop here. <clears throat> I got to stop right here and talk about this. Okay. <clears throat> what we have here is Thoth was given the command. Sorry, I'm going to readjust this. This is my, fr I didn't know I would be doing this today. I just felt motivated to do it. So here we have Thoth giving the command or was given the charge to lift up humanity, to guide humanity to greater achievements just as Atlantis was failing and dying. He left, he was summoned to the, to the temple. Um, he was a rever revered member of the Atlantean society. 
His father was Thothmi. That was his name, Thothmi. Now, <clears throat> in Zechariah Sitchin's books, his interpretations, which I believe are accurate, Thoth was known as Ningashida. That was his name in Sumer. Ningashida was the foremost scientist son of Enki. And there we have the creation of mankind in the, in the Eden, the Garden of Eden. It's all in the Sumerian tablets. It's all there. In the biblical, the bibl the biblical accounts are summations pulled from the earlier accounts of our very creation, mankind's creation. So here we have evidences that reincarnation is real. It's very real. Thoth, at least with Thoth, Thoth had the ability and still has the ability to take multiple bodies whenever he wants, for however long he wants, except for every 1,000 years he has to put his body away and regenerate it um, in the sarcophagus, which is later spoken about in the tablets. This is only halfway through Emerald Tablet number one. In the Tablet one, we hear the... the um, we have the um, accounting of Thoth getting in his spaceship or craft of some sort, leaving the island of Atlantis, one of the islands, and traveling to the east, to the land of Chem. K-H-E-M, I think that was how it was spelled which is the land of Egypt, as we know today. So, <clears throat> when Thoth arrived, the savage people, just a little bit above caveman mentality and social structure, came out to attack, you know, with spears, knives, whatever. And Thoth, right here where I put it on pause, stunned them with his rays, froze them. So they could not speak, they could not act, their body was immune, it was, it was, it was just, just locked up. They could see and they could hear, but they couldn't talk and they couldn't make any kind of physical actions. And Thoth then told them, you are all the children of light, we are here to help you, to bring you up into a, into a higher existence, a, a higher um, understanding of, of your reality. Let's continue. Some stone of the mountain. Then spoke I to them in words calm and peaceful, telling them of the might of Atlantis, saying we were children of the sun and its messengers. Cowed I them by my display of magic science, until at my feet they groveled when I released them. Long dwelt we in the land of Cam, long and yet long again, until obeying the commands of the master, who while sleeping yet lives eternally, I sent from me the sons of Atlantis, sent them in many directions, that from the womb of time wisdom might rise again in her children." Long time dwelt I in the land of Chem, doing great works by the wisdom within me. Upward grew into the light of knowledge the children of Chem, watered by the rains of my wisdom. Blasted I then a path to Amenti, so that... Okay, Thoth is telling us, he made Egypt. He brought that primitive people up. A huge spike in their culture and their society that we now revere today is ancient Egypt and the great things that Egypt brought to the world came from this guy thought. So do you, do you now start to see, and you will see in subsequent videos that I'm going to make talking about these tablets, Thoth, T-H-O-T-H, is the most important 
person ever to walk the earth. Now I know some of you are going to say Jesus was. I support that 100%. And I'll tell you this. Jesus Christ and Thoth the Atlantean is the same person. Same guy. The same energy occupied both of those bodies. I've had a witness and a testifying truthfulness to me of this over the past five, six years. It's the most ringing true thing ever. Let's continue. We're just going to do tablet one today. I might retain my powers, living from age to age as son of Atlantis, keeping the wisdom, preserving the records. Great grew the sons of Cam, conquering the people around them, growing slowly upwards in soul force. Now for a time, I go from among them into the dark halls of Amenti, deep in the halls of the earth, before the lords of the powers, face to face once again with the dweller. Raised I high over the entrance, a doorway, a gateway leading down to Amenti. Few there would be with courage to dare it, few past the portal to dark Amenti. Raised over the passage I, a mighty pyramid, using the power that overcomes earth force. Deep and yet deeper placed I, a force house or chamber. From it carved I a circular passage, reaching almost to the great summit. There in the apex, said I, the crystal, sending the ray into the time-space, drawing the force from out of the ether, concentrating upon the gateway to Amenti. Other chambers I built and left vacant to all seeming, yet hidden within them are the keys to Amenti. He who in courage would dare the dark realm. Okay, <clears throat> 1925, this material became available to the world. Remember, this stuff, these tablets were buried underneath one of the pyramids in South America or Central America. One of the Egyptian priests, pyramid priest holders, priesthood holders, from tens and twenty, thirty generations of handed down keys responsibilities, information, knowledge was kept within a very tight group, very tight group. Earlier, that same group went to Central and South America, which I think is the supporting evidences, some of the supporting evidences of the Book of Mormon. But Mormons don't even realize this. They don't. They don't get it. But that's not the point. 1925, another mission was undertaken by these pyramid priests to go and get the emerald tablets. Permission, as we heard, permission was granted for translations and then subsequent publishing of the emerald tablets of Thoth, T-H-O-T-H, Thoth. 1925 was yesterday folks. It really was. Now, can you imagine if these tablets came out in, say, 1825? And I've listened to these a few hundred times now already. So I can tell you that there's a lot of things in here that today's mind, with familiarity on technology and information, can grasp these concepts that are going to be talked about, and we will hear them together. But to the mind of perhaps any year prior to 1925, the average mind could not comprehend this. They couldn't, they couldn't grasp it. 1925, radio was a very common and becoming more common media for every family in, in the United States. The radio was it. Today, yesteryear, was the television was it. Today, it's the phone is it, okay? 
or these phones, not just the phone, but the cell phone, the, the mobile device, the mobile computer. But 1925, the media was radio. So, and airplanes were around, so flying could be comprehended by everybody. So they came forth in 1925. Let's keep listening. This is still tablet one. Let him be purified first by long fasting. Lie in the sarcophagus of stone in my chamber, then to reveal I to him the great mysteries. Soon shall he follow to where I shall meet him. Even in the darkness of earth shall I meet him. I, Thoth, Lord of wisdom, meet him and hold him and dwell with him always. Built I the great pyramid, patterned after the pyramid of earth force, burning eternally, so that it, too, might remain through the ages. In it I built my knowledge of magic science, so that it might be here when again I return from Amenti. I, while I sleep in the halls of Amenti, my soul roaming free will incarnate, dwell among men in this form or another. Emissary on earth am I of the dweller, fulfilling his commands so man might be lifted. See, he says right there, he will take up any body he wants in this form or another, all with a mission to help us to create a greater mankind. Now return I to the halls of Amenti, leaving behind me some of my wisdom. Preserve ye and keep ye the command of the dweller. Lift ever upwards your eyes toward the light. Surely in time ye are one with the master. Surely by right ye are one with the master. Surely by right ye are one with the all. Now I depart from ye. Know my commandments. Keep them and be them. And I will be with you, helping and guiding you into the light. Now before me opens the portal, go I down in the darkness of night. Emerald Tablet 2. Okay, well, what did that sound like right there at the end? That sounded like Jesus Christ preaching as we have all read in the Gospels of the New Testament. Obey my commandments and I will be with you for all time. It sounds very similar. Because it's the same thing. We have here an individual named Thoth the Atlantean, known as Ningashida in the Sumerian times, known as Jesus Christ in the more modern times. And those are just three names. There's multiple other identities that I suspect, and other people a lot smarter and more versed than I in this have names for. I'm not going to really talk about that because that's, for me, personal speculation. But... There's multiple people that have walked the earth and will continue to walk the earth that are here to help you and I become better. Because what is the main objective here? When I was in the army, you were a fuck up, okay? If you did the same thing over and over again badly, you had to do better. Okay, and that's pretty much in life how things are. So, what we do today, we need to do better tomorrow. We need to not do worse things. We need to become better and do it better. Don't make the same mistakes twice. Sounds good on paper, sounds good on video, as we're doing right now. But when I apply it to my professional life, when I'm doing my welding and my metalworking and my this and that, I want to do it per perfectly. I want to be the best at what I do. And I am. I'm the best media blaster in <laughs> for a long ways around, every direction. I know all the blasters. There's only a handful of them. And I'm the best one. I have the best materials. I have the best methods, I have the best tools, and I have the best vision for the outcome and the end state. End state. Okay? That's why people wait 
are waiting still for me to get stood up completely stood up operational and so i'm not there yet because 2020 in 2020 really was a gut punch for me and for many of you i lost a lot of business because of two people who basically um are and were ill prepared for the costs for what they needed and requested to be done to their vehicles so i lost my shorts on those deals 2018 and 2019 was a little bit different because i was wrapping up previous jobs and those jobs came in in full force after the media blasting meaning the you know i do the blasting and then i get the cars or junk and the owner hires me oh please fix my car so i do it so i had all these cars stacking up and uh and that became my job. The media blasting, I moved and I couldn't set up, so I kept doing the metal work and I had all these other jobs to finish. So I kind of pushed away the media blasting par portion of it. You know, I was, let me just get these cars done first. Well, 2020, I had two failures, you know, which I've outlined in other videos that caused me a significant fiscal dent to hit me in the gut. So, what I'm going to do is, I, where I'm going to this is I'm, I'm, I'm resuming my media blasting and I will be the best, continue to be the best in what I do. Get stood up and I apply this kind of material to try to incorporate it in every grain of my existence, you know, professionally and personally, trying to do the better, better at what we do, better at what I do. In Thoth, this is just tem Emerald Tablet number one. And the preface in the beginning, um, the outline at the beginning of the uh, video, that's what the man was talking about. So there's a lot of stuff in there. Let me just look at what, <coughs> what Gerald was talking about <coughs> in um, his Emerald Tablet. Uh, um, wow, he's got a lot of stuff in here. Uh, tablet one is 156 and I'm just this is all extemporaneously done I, I had no plan for this so hopefully my next videos will be better um, you know I could just say right now a good compendium for you if you're interested in this would be this book right here and that's probably backwards. You know, I apologize for that. That it is backwards because I'm doing the rear facing, front facing camera, I should say. But um, read this. Page 156, he goes into tablet number one. Um, I don't know if I want to go and read this. Um, but, you know, there's like seven or eight pages of uh, interesting stuff and Gerald's interpretations of Emerald Tablet number one. So, wow, 48 minutes and 36 seconds. This is much longer than I thought it would be. However, I wanna do this maybe once, maybe three times a month. I wanna talk about the tablets. We listen to it and I'll just give my rants and my random interpretations of what I hear, correlate it to what I know, what I've experienced, and how I can correlate it to modern day life to springboard to make tomorrow better than today. That's my objective in doing these. So please feel free to comment below. I know there's a lot of smarter, a lot more smart people than I on these subjects. Okay, there's a lot, a lot of good people out there. This is what I'm really interested in. This is really what I focus on. And this is really all I listen to all day long at work. These kind of podcasts, this kind of material right here. Really good stuff. Folks, thank you so much for spending 50 minutes with me today. And um, I'll try to do better the next time I make this video. And we'll talk about Emerald Tablet number two. Okay? So, till then...
Peace out. Be good. And look up to the light and be good to one another. So that's all you can say. That's all I can do. That's all we can, uh, can hope to be is the best we can. Okay? And I'm grateful for, th for this material, for this thought stuff. Really, I am very grateful for it. So anyways, peace out. Choose.